to the desktop so we can access it easily. It's a very small program so that's very convenient and we will start it up. Double click on PuTTY and you'll be presented with a dialog box that lets you enter the IP of your server. Now remember we have given our little Linux server a static IP. Let's get the little uh, post-it note here. Okay, that was 172, yep, okay. 172, 16, 48, 10. Because we are going to tell Putty what the IP address is of our Linux server. It's going to connect to port 22, which is SSH, Secure Shell. And uh, we're going to give this little session a name, because otherwise we're going to have to type in the IP all the time. Just click Save and open. Um, because this is the first th time that your Windows machine connects to your Linux server, it's going to say like, hey, I don't know what this server is, but that is a message that you're going to get just once. Logging in is very easy. Type in your username and type in your password. Oops, uh, again. And there you have it, connected to your Linux server from your Windows machine. To really show you how this works, I've got the uh, VM of my XP machine on the left and have the VM of the Linux machine we just installed on the right. On the left I start up PuTTY and I enter the IP address or choose the session. I enter my username, enter the password. And right now I am logged in to the Linux machine on the right. Now, um, in order to uh, let you see what you can do, I'm going to see if I can start up an application on the terminal window of the Unix machine on the right and do something on the remote terminal in the Windows XP machine on the left. So for example, I have done a sudo apt get update, which will update all my software sources. There you go. And the cool thing about that is that you can actually work with several people or with several terminals on the same Linux server at the same time. Now on the right, in the meantime, I am uh, launching the top command, which is kind of a system monitor, which lets you see which uh, systems are running. And now on the left, I'm going to reboot the server. I'll do that by telling it to sudo reboot now. If you look on the left, you'll see that the server is actually going into a reboot and that the Windows machine has, of course, lost the connection. So without having to um, physically connect your Linux machine, you can actually have it running in a VM in the background or you can have it running on a box without a monitor. So you can always connect to it from your w favorite Windows system. You don't need extra desktop space. Now as I'm rebooting the server, I'm going to load up the PuTTY session again and I'm going to reconnect to the server as soon as it's completely restarted enter my username, I enter my password, and you have one working SSH server. Oh, <laughs> you're back. You're done already? Well, did you uh, manage to get through all of the how-tos that I gave you? Did you manage to follow all the steps? Well, if you didn't, well, that's not a biggie. You can just go back and watch the episode all over again until you get it right. But remember, if you have any questions or something, don't hesitate. Go to the website, go to the feedback and the contact form. Shoot me a question. You know, I might be able to help you out. So I do hope you enjoyed our little episode on installing a SSH server and making a steady IP and stuff like that. And it's one of more to come about our Linux server series. Now, if you say, Nightwise, that was awesome. Well, help me out. I'm going to need your help in promoting this show. I'm going to need your help in promoting this show on iTunes and in other places. I don't ask for feedback. I don't ask for stupid uh, PayPal buttons or anything. That doesn't matter. I do this for free and I do this because I love to do it. But if you can, 
Find a friend that would be interested in this podcast and tell them to subscribe. That way we find more listeners and more listeners, well, the more is the merrier. And if you can really help me out, well, write me a review in iTunes because the more reviews I get in the iTunes store, the higher that I get on the ratings and the higher that I get on the ratings, the higher that this show is going to get when it comes to finding new listeners and that's what we want, don't we? Just, you know, finding out more people that are interested in all of this and growing the nightwise.com community. Speaking of that, if you're on Facebook, you know how to find me. My name is Nightwise and you can even join the fans of nightwise.com fan club and, uh, well, yeah, it's kind of a fan club and uh, you'll be apprised of all the new stuff that's been going on, new articles that we post, new uh, episodes that will be going online and you'll even get the scoops and, you know, the previews of everything that we're going to do. So if you're on Facebook, join us there. Uh, for the rest, you know where to find me. Nightwise at nightwise.com is the email addresses and uh, www.nightwise.com is the website. And of course, if you're on Twitter, my name's Nightwise. If you're on Skype, my name's Nightwise. And the story goes on. But by now, you probably just know. So I'm going to quit my yapping, going to leave you to it. And I hope you have a great time working with your Ubuntu server. Well, that's all for me. See you on the next episode of KWTV 009. That will be 0010. And we'll have a great time there. See you on the flip side. Have technology work for you.